I'm at work right now, so I will keep this pretty brief. Today I was reminded of something creepy that happened in my office. It all happened about five years ago. That was when we moved into this building. I've got to say that from the moment before I got my desk all set up, I felt that something was off about this place. I got a weird vibe, you know? Let me try to explain what I mean. The first thing I noticed was the elevator. It was like it was too modern for this building. It was really high tech compared to everything else there. Also, in the bathroom, there was a sensor activated light, which seemed out of place too. I don't know. It was like there was efforts made to replace individual things and not renovate the whole place. It was like the interior didn't match the exterior in places. It was a little weird. I could kind of sense that a lot had happened in this building. It probably was the offices of multiple businesses in the past. I had to do quite a bit of overtime in the coming days after we moved into the new building. I was always fine with doing overtime, so I didn't mind, to be honest. But this was something else. It was more than I'd ever done before. I guess that I wasn't very good at listening to my body at the time because, looking back on it, I was overworking myself. It wasn't just work though. Every time I finished late, I ended up staying up late. I was surviving on less and less sleep. I would stay up late because I needed to eat, shower, and try to mentally switch off for a little while. One day during this busy period, I felt some pretty intense stomach pains at work. I had been feeling rough and worn down, but the stomach pains were a new thing for me. A new concerning thing. I decided to make use of the bathroom on the second floor, because that was the more modern of the two bathrooms. Now normally the bathroom's lights are usually on, but they were off. I guess that was because it was the weekend. Yep, I was at work on a Sunday. It was a dark day. I remember it being in the late stages of autumn. The kind of day where it was dark out early. It was a little eerie, but as soon as I went there, the sensor light picked up on my movement and it lit up the bathroom. I really shouldn't have been in the office over the weekend, but I was. I had a big project presentation coming up that I needed to work on. That's probably why I was having those stomach pains, come to think of it. My stress levels were elevated. I pushed open the stall door and I got the shock of my life. There was someone there. Someone I had never seen before. He certainly didn't work in my office. I was so stunned I almost forgot about my stomach. He had white hair and he seemed kind of old. I remember he was wearing a shabby kind of shirt. It looked to me like he had been wearing it for a while. He was stood with his back facing me. My brain went to autopilot, so I said, Oh, sorry, or something like that. I was so embarrassed to see someone in there that I didn't really question it. I just closed the stall door and darted out of the bathroom as fast as I could. I headed up another flight of stairs to use the bathroom on the third floor. I guessed that whoever I ran into in the bathroom was doing some overtime too. Halfway up the stairs, my tired and confused mind threw up a question that really woke me up. And the question that cut right through me was, why was the sensor light off if there was someone in the bathroom? The light lit up when I went in. Why didn't it detect his motion? The light usually stays on for ages once someone goes in there, so I didn't really understand. In the end, I guessed that there had been some kind of malfunction with the light. I went home after I got my work done, and nothing else happened that day. Whoever was in the building at the same time as me came and left without my knowledge. Now flash forward a couple of days or maybe weeks, I uncovered some disturbing news. There were rumors about our new building circulating around the office. The rumor that I heard was there was an elderly person who collapsed and died 
in this building due to overwork. They say that he collapsed in the bathroom, and that was why the previous occupants left. Ever since I heard that rumor, I haven't been able to go anywhere near the bathroom I saw that old guy in. I have been trying to convince myself that he was nothing more than a figment of my imagination, a hallucination conjured up by an overly tired mind. I tried to tell myself that that was what I saw that day, rather than something paranormal, but I just can't shake the feeling it was something more than that. Perhaps if the rumors were true about the old man dying due to overwork, then the reason I saw him might have been some kind of grim premonition of what's in store for me if I carry on overworking myself. I can just imagine him in the bathroom, hyperventilating, sweating, and shaking. I don't know why that image comes to me. He's also clutching at his chest. It makes me realize that I really have to listen to my body more. Since I saw that man, I've tried to make little steps to back away from all the overtime, but it's tough. Oh, and I always use the restroom on the third floor now. I'll be fine. I just got to get through this next presentation. Hi, Jay here. Did you know in Japanese there's a specific word that describes deaths at work? Karoshi. It literally means overwork death. And is the term used to describe sudden occupation related deaths. The most common medical causes of death through karoshi are heart attacks, strokes due to stress, malnourishment or fasting. The mental state of individuals in a hostile or stressful workplace can also be a defining factor and can lead to karo jisatsu in basic and YouTube friendly terms ending it all due to what's going on at work. Having worked in Japan, I can say that the work styles, company culture and what's expected of employees is of a higher pressure than I'm used to in the West. I am of course just speaking on my own personal experiences though. If you're interested in learning more about Karoshi, then I recommend checking out the link in my description. This happened when I was in high school. I don't exactly remember how old I was, but I know I was a teenager. I am part of a family of nine. Yeah, it's a big family. We lived together in a detached house at the time. I don't really know how to cut to the chase in any other way other than saying, in a family that size, it's inevitable that there is a queue sometimes for the bathroom in the morning. 7am in my house was like Shinjuku station during rush hour sometimes. It was always busy, but we lived with it. It was just our lifestyle. One night during dinner my mum said something, a little strange. She said that that morning the light in the bathroom was on and she needed to use it. So she called out to see if anyone was in there. And someone replied, yeah. My mum said that she wasn't sure if it was my younger brother or my little sister. So she called out both of their names to see if she could find out. She waited a while but no one replied. She said that she was a little concerned by that silence. So she went to unlock the door. When she opened the door, she said that she couldn't believe her eyes. The bathroom was empty. No one was in there but she said she was adamant that she heard one of our voices coming from the bathroom. I wasn't surprised when she told me she got the chills after that experience. Of course my dad shook it off and said that she must have been imagining or hearing things. I guessed that that could be a possibility. We lived in a noisy home, and when it was quiet sometimes, it just didn't sound or feel right. I suppose that sounds a little weird, but it's true. Some of my siblings agreed with my dad. They said that it could have been street noise, the neighbor's dog or the TV being on in another room. I allowed them to sway me and I changed my mind. And then after a couple of days, 
I kind of forgot about it. One morning, a little while later, I was getting ready to go to school, and I needed the bathroom. It was just a standard morning in the family of nine. I saw the light on in the bathroom, so I called out, Is someone in there? Or something like that. Then, alongside the noise of a newspaper being unrolled, I hear my father's voice say, Hmm. I thought to myself, Why are you reading a goddamn paper in there? You know how busy it is in the morning. So I rattled the door handle and told him to hurry up. However, when I rattled the door, it slowly opened. It wasn't locked. The door opened to reveal an empty bathroom. I was really creeped out by that sight. I was freaking out because I could have sworn that I heard my dad in there. I feel as if I could pass a lie detector on that too, because in my mind it was so clear. I was certain that he was in there. Only, he wasn't. I don't know what to do, so I quickly left the house. I didn't want to use the bathroom at home that day, and I decided to use the one at school. I couldn't believe the same thing that happened to my mum happened to me. I'm sure I was not hearing things. I'm sure it wasn't street noise or the TV. And I know it wasn't the neighbor's dog making that noise. Later that night, while we were all having dinner, I mentioned what happened that morning to my family. My sister was the most shocked because she said that she had heard my father's voice in the bathroom directly after I left for school. That just freaked me out even more. It was seriously weird. There was something in our house that was trying to mimic the voices of my family members by the sound of things. I don't know how else to explain it. It happened on a bright morning in a family home that had had no history, as far as I know, of paranormal activity. It really creeped me out, and I don't know what that was. I still live at home, but I will be looking to move out as soon as I can. I have heard voices in the night, coming from across the hall, that sound like my siblings talking in quiet conversations, and sometimes I can't get to sleep, because I don't know if I am listening to my brothers and sisters muttering at night, or if it's something else. This happened when I started living alone, and it wasn't long after I got my apartment. Man, I loved that apartment. I can still remember the layout of the place now. Anyways, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I had the sudden urge to use the bathroom. I got up, and it was weird, because for some reason, I felt like I was being led. What I mean by that is, I usually get up and swing my legs off of the bed, and take a couple of minutes rubbing my eyes or checking my phone or whatever, and then I actually get up. That night, I found my feet immediately, and as soon as they touched the hardwood floor, they took me to the bathroom. I hid it in there, shut the door, and I hit the lights, and as soon as I hit them, they went out. The bulb needed replacing. Suddenly, I was reminded of all the creepy and weird stuff I had read online, and I'm not ashamed to say, I was beginning to freak out. Yeah, I felt a shudder caress my shoulder blades. So naturally, I began to panic. I immediately tried to get out of the dark bathroom. I chucked my weight against the door and I was fumbling for the lock in the dark. My bathroom lock was weird. You had to kind of push and twist. So as much as it seems like I was overreacting, I wasn't. It was just one of those things that if you panicked, you just couldn't work it. And remember, at this stage, I was still new to my apartment. Just as I was thinking, I was worked up to a point that I couldn't go back, something else happened. I heard something. A whisper in my ear. It was something like, Get out. I know that sounds so cliche, but it was like that. I started to cry. I was a young woman living alone and I didn't get what was happening, so... I didn't really know what else to do. You might act like I did if it happened to you. There were a few too many tears and a lot of pushing and pulling with the door. I wanted nothing but to get out and rush back to my bedroom. 
and jump straight into bed. I could see myself turning on all the lights and rummaging around my bed to find my TV's remote control. I wanted to be surrounded by light and noise. I imagined that after a while the noises of everyday life would make me forget about whatever was in the bathroom with me because I felt like I was certain I wasn't alone. While I was imagining getting out of the bathroom, I managed to fumble the thumb lock open. I readied myself to shoulder barge the door open the moment after I heard the lock click. The door popped open and it slowly slid into its natural position, as if it were just naturally left open a few inches. As the door swung open, I saw something. There was something in the gap. Even though the light in my bathroom was out, and there was no other light in my apartment on, I knew that there was something there. It was just outside the bathroom door. It was right in front of me. All the intentions I had of leaving the bathroom went away instantly. There was something out there, and I didn't want to be anywhere near it. For a split second, I swear I saw the gleam of the whites of its eyes. I keep saying it because I know that whatever it was wasn't anything like me. It didn't feel human. I guess that's the only way I can explain it. It wasn't a home invader, I'm certain of that. It wasn't a person. I know it wasn't a person. In the quiet of the middle of the night and the darkness, I summoned the courage to draw myself towards the gap in the door. I just felt this strong urge to look out, to see if I could see anything. It was so dark that I didn't see anything at first, and I should have accepted that as a blessing in disguise, but I couldn't pull myself away from the gap in the bathroom door. I then saw a jet black shadowy figure move in an amazingly fluid way. It was there, and I saw it close range. Please don't ask me to explain what it was because I just can't. All I can say is, there was a shadow and it looked humanoid. When I saw it, I just slowly shut the bathroom door, closing me in the bathroom. The place I so desperately wanted to escape had become a safe space for me. I closed and locked the door. I don't care if you call me crazy, but I ended up spending the night in my bathroom. I curled up into the fetal position, and I tried to get as much sleep as I could. As soon as I could see, the morning light filtering in through the gaps in the door, I managed to get the courage to leave the bathroom. I went to my parents' house after that, and I've been like a parasite since that day to them. I just get so weirded out when I'm home alone. I don't like what I'm becoming. I don't know if I can bring myself to live alone again for a long while. The university I go to is kind of weird. There was some graffiti on one of the walls in the men's room that caught my eye. It's in the fourth floor of one of the buildings on campus. The building is pretty old. It's not like the modern buildings on the other side of the campus. I ended up using the men's room on the fourth floor one afternoon, and I read the graffiti I mentioned. I guess most people read what's written on the walls in the bathroom like me. I mean, there isn't really all that much else to do in there, is there? There was the usual kind of stuff like you might expect in a male bathroom store, but I found that my eyes were drawn to something in the corner. There were some numbers, and those numbers were the following. 183, 450, 298. The last number had some dots after it. They were written spaced apart and they didn't seem to make much sense to me. One thing that piqued my interest was the fact that they were sort of hidden. Unlike some graffiti that you might see in a football stadium, bathroom, or a train stations, these numbers were kind of tucked away 
from the natural places you might look at. It was like a secret, and that to me was pretty interesting. I wondered what it all meant, and who it was for. Somehow the numbers seemed a little familiar to me too, and it dawned on me. One of the numbers was my student number, hence why I'm able to remember. Huh, that's weird. I decided to take note of the other two numbers to see if I could find out if they were student numbers. If so, I planned on trying to find out who they were and what correlation, if any, they had with my student number. There's something else weird about my university. It seems that a lot of students who go here end up having accidents, some being fatal through choices of their own, if you catch my drift. Our university has some really weird energy, man, honestly. So I searched the other two numbers and I found that something had happened to the other two students. They had both died. It was weird, but I mean, I couldn't do anything about it. It was just one of those things. One more of the elements of my strange university's culture, I supposed. A few days went by and I found myself in need of the bathroom again when I was near that building. I decided to head on up to the fourth floor. I don't know why. I just felt like checking out that graffiti again. I went to the same stall and sat down. I looked in the corner where I saw it, and I was slightly surprised to see that there was something new this time. And this is what it said. 183. Finished. 450. Finished. 298. Not yet. There were a couple more numbers that I can't quite remember now, but they had different little phrases next to them. It was something like, a little bit longer. It seemed like finished meant dead, based on what I knew about the other student numbers. I knew one number amongst the other new ones though. 361 was one of my friend's student number. His number had the words, not yet, written next to it. He had an accident recently, he came off of his motorbike, and he hasn't woken up yet. I'm really worried about him. Is that what not yet means? It was just too much of a coincidence for me. So after I visited him, I went back to our university and into the old building on campus. I went up to the bathroom on the fourth floor, and headed into the stall with the numbers. I found my number, and I used some Tipex or Whiteout to cover it. I was scared that something might happen to me, and I just wanted to be on the safe side. Yesterday, I headed up there again. I wanted to make sure that no one had written anything new. I didn't want to see my number there again. I was so shocked to see that my number was back, and there was something else written after it this time. Something I hadn't seen until that point. Do not try to erase your number. 298. I don't know what to do about this, guys. This is a bit of an unusual story or situation. I'm not really sure if this is the right platform to be sharing this, but I don't think it would be out of place here if I share my experience. Maybe I am wrong and you can decide. I won't be naming names or locations anyways. Anyways, this all happened in a place that was close to my heart at the time. And if I am honest, a place that I really miss. It was my mother's coffee shop. Like any restaurant or bar, they were regulars. My mum had this regular at her coffee shop. She had a customer who used to come at the same time every day like clockwork. One day she noticed that there was a difference in his regularity. He stormed in at a different time than usual and he asked if he could use the bathroom. Of course, my mum said please go ahead or words to that effect. She waited for him to approach the counter and order his usual, but he didn't. That day he left just as quickly as he entered. No coffee for him that day. 
Sadly, that was the last time that my mother saw him, because unfortunately, and sadly, the young man chose to end things for himself. He chose to leap from a very tall nearby building. My mother wasn't exactly his friend, I mean, even though he was a regular, they never really struck up any form of conversation. He was just there, and so was she. No one really understood why he did what he did. There were some rumours that reached her ears from the coffee shop. She heard that he had been deceived. I'm not sure if that was a money thing or a romantic thing. I guess it doesn't matter now. It could have just been a rumour. Shortly after her regular was no longer a regular, strange goings on began to occur at her coffee shop. Customers complained quite regularly that they couldn't access the bathroom because it was locked from the inside. They said there was someone in there who was taking way too long. My mum, at first, just chalked this up to a couple of coincidences. But when her customer complaints came more and more regularly, she found it harder to defend. Especially when she opened the bathroom door, only to find that there was no one in there. She said whenever she opened the door with her master key and went to investigate, she felt as if there was someone in the bathroom with her, or as if someone had just left. I think that the way she phrased it was that she felt as if there was a sign that someone had just been there. I don't know, maybe that's something close to what it feels like when you just miss the train or if you sit in a seat that someone's recently sat in. There was something there just a few moments ago. I have to admit, when I helped out on shift at my mum's cafe, I did feel as if there was something with me sometimes. I don't know if I can put that feeling into words. Just, there was something. Sometimes. My mum couldn't stand it. She didn't feel right in her own cafe. And she thought that it wasn't great for business either. So she decided to call in a priest to bless the place. I know that sounds a bit rash, but honestly, it was necessary. I think it cost my mother a lot of money. She didn't really know what the going rate was for an exorcism or whatever the priest did. I feel as if... Mm, it's hard to say, but maybe it was not the best deal. It was this exorcism or blessing that proved to be the cafe's downfall. Our intention was for it to clear the air, start fresh, you know? However, the reputation the cafe got after that priest, that holy man, showed up was really unexpected. Before we knew it, the cafe was accused of being haunted, and we were listed as a creepy location on the internet. Sadly, my mother closed the place and put it up for sale about six months after the strange goings-on began. As soon as it was up for sale, another company, a more established company, jumped at the chance and rented the building. Two months later, it was closed to the public and back on the market. It would sell and then, after a few months, you'd see it online. No matter what kind of business ended up owning the place, they would only own it for a short while before it was back on the market. It was very weird and still is for me at least. I know it sounds a little strange but I feel as if that young man's grudge or residual energy is trapped in my mother's old coffee shop premise and any business that opens its doors there is doomed to fail. I wonder what his thoughts were during his final visit to her cafe. I wonder if he ever left. There's a toilet stall in my school's bathroom that doesn't open. It's just always locked and no one really knows why. It's the bathroom on the first floor of the north building, and the stall that won't open is the furthest one from the bathroom door. It's locked tight. It doesn't budge at all. It's pretty weird. The north building is rarely used, to be honest. The rooms in that building aren't used for lessons. It's become a kind of storage location. 
Due to the fact that not many people used that building, it wasn't long before creepy rumors began to spread around our school. There was a story going around that if you knocked on the door that never opens, then something would knock back. The kids at school said that the paranormal lurked beyond that door, some kind of spirit or ghost. They said that if you asked if anyone was there, then you would get a response too. It seemed like everyone was talking about that stall door. No one could really agree on what the reply was though. I heard different things. One day I decided to see if these rumors were true. A couple of other boys from my class wanted to test their metal too. We arranged to meet on the first floor of the north building when the sun went down. We didn't need to wait long after school for it to get dark since it was winter. All of the restrooms in this building were supposed to have the same layout, I guess. Because the shape of the building never really changed from floor to floor. However, the bathroom on the first floor had this weird kind of atmosphere. I don't know how to put it. It just felt like something was different there. It was very quiet that day. You could have heard a pin drop in that bathroom. The first thing I noticed was the closed stall and we all headed over to it. Some of the boys were braver than the others. Some immediately tried yanking on the door handle in an attempt to wrench it open. No matter how much they pushed and pulled the door, it didn't budge. We then thought that we might be able to take a look at whatever was inside that stall by standing on the toilet in the stall next to it and peeking over. We quickly realized that that was gonna be impossible. It was boarded up from the top of the stall door to the ceiling. Well, we figured out that there was only one more option that we could try, knocking on the door to see if the rumors were true. We didn't know who should knock first. No one really volunteered at first. And then my friend went over to the door and just started knocking. I began to feel a surge of chills race through me the moment he knocked on that door. I put it down to the fact that I was feeling a little nervous. We all stood there in silent anticipation to see if something would reply to my friend's knock, but no response came. He turned and faced the rest of us with a sly smile on his face, and then he shrugged and said, I guess I'll try this then. Is anybody there? The only response we received was the sound of the tap dripping slowly in the sink on the other side of the room. I guess the rumors are false, guys, he said. After he said that, it was like the tension in the room began to dissipate. We all calmed down a little and began to joke and crack wise about the situation. Guys, I'm gonna take a piss, and then we're getting out of this super scary bathroom. Most of the guys took a whiz at the same time, and my friend was showing off his confidence by whistling as he went. The bathroom had a completely new atmosphere. Then suddenly, a noise cut through the bathroom. It was a creaking sound and I recognized it immediately. I couldn't physically bring myself to look in the direction of that noise. Guys, I think the stall door is open now, one of the boys said. We all agreed, but for some reason, not one of us had turned to face the stalls. Not one had looked back. I was the closest one to the door that never opened, and after I'd finished relieving myself, I shook off my fear and turned to face it. One of my friends had beaten me to it though. I heard him scream and watched him run out of the bathroom. This, of course, set off mass hysteria between us, and we all started screaming and running too. We left the bathroom, and we ran into our friend who ran first. He was sat on the floor with his back against the wall. Hey. Are you okay? What happened? Questions like that were fired at him from all angles. He replied by saying, I don't know guys, I saw something in there. It was like a small shrine, like an altar to worship some kind of god. Why would that be in there? It's a bathroom store. It was there, I swear it. Well, we all wanted to get back in there to see if we could see. We formed a line and slowly opened the bathroom door. As soon as we were back in there, all we could see was that the stall door was closed again. That was really shocking, as we were the only ones, well, so we thought, that were in the building. 
and we had only just left the bathroom. For a matter of moments, it didn't seem possible that it could be closed again without someone's influence. We went over to the door, and we all had a go trying to pry the door open, but once again it wouldn't budge. It was sealed tight. It was almost as if it had never been opened. But we'd all heard it. It was a very weird experience, and one that left us with more questions than answers. I guess that the rumors weren't true about hearing a reply or someone knocking on the door, but I couldn't explain what happened that afternoon. There was definitely something to that stall, and if there was a kind of altar for worship in there, what was it used for, and who was trying to keep it hidden? And what a place to hide it, at our school? None of it made sense. A few weeks went by, and we all kind of forgot about what happened. I think for me personally, the reason I forgot was because I couldn't process it, and my brain just kind of wanted rid of it. It was occupying too many of my thoughts. My friend, who saw that supposed shrine in the stall, came to me one afternoon at school and said, When I get up to use the bathroom at night, something weird keeps happening, man. Someone comes and knocks on the door. I ask who's there and I get no answer, so I ask my family in the morning and no one owns up to it. It happens when I'm in the shower, brushing my teeth, washing my face. It's every night, man. Every night. My friends and I have a plan to sleep over at his house soon, to see if we can figure out what's happening, and if we can hear it for ourselves. I want to see whatever's knocking. There have been no further posts by this uploader. Sorry guys.